And there's the N0 NBH banner. There's his website. And his banner shows up in many places, for example, at uh, qrz.com. And that's the one I'm going to talk about because in one little banner, you have all the stuff that I think is important to try and understand what's going on right now. So here's uh, the N0 NBH banner. I pulled that uh, uh, yesterday morning. And in the gold boxes are the parameters that I think are important. Now we have to realize there's a key fact. When we're at solar minimum and the solar flux is about 65, you know, bottoms out down at 65, and when the sunspot number is zero, in other words, the sun is blank, there's still enough extreme ultraviolet, uh, ultraviolet radiation for 20 meters to be open during the day and early evening. So that's a good baseline. Uh, how much above 65 for solar flux and how much above sunspot number of zero will tell us which bands can be open. And we'll look at a, a table of uh, that kind of information in a little bit. So solar flux, sunspot number and 304A, which is uh, extreme ultraviolet and 304 angstroms, which is 30.4 nanometers. That can indicate which of the higher bands may be open. Uh, the K, A, B, Z, and S, W parameters tell us how disturbed the F2 region may be. So let's look at those, all those parameters. SFI is the latest 10.7 meters, 10.7 centimeters solar flux. Like I said, at solar minimum, it bottoms out around 65. And at solar max, it can get up to 300. So from that banner, we see that the solar flux yesterday was 74. The sunspot number was 36. So what that tells us, we're much nearer solar minimum than solar maximum. Sunspot number uh, goes from zero to about 350 solar max. Again, the sunspot number of, uh, so what was it? Oops, 30, uh, sunspot number, hold on here. Sunspot number of 36. Uh, says we're much closer to solar min than uh, solar max, a big solar max at least. 304A, that's the extreme ultraviolet radiation. That's the true ionizing radiation of the F2 region, which is the most important region for long distance uh, DXing. And it, uh, at solar min, it's around 90 and can go up to 400. Now, the uh, Bottom, oops, anyway, the bottom uh, parameter, MUF US Boulder, that's the maximum usable frequency over the Boulder ionosan, assuming it's the midpoint of a 3,000 kilometer path. So you can say, see that uh, yesterday at uh, 1332 UTC, which was, uh, uh, take it forward to a five, uh, something like. Uh, mountain time, uh, 7.30 in the morning, mountain time, um, uh, that uh, 20 meters should have been open if Boulder was the midpoint of a 3,000-kilometer uh, a, uh, path. And that gives a good indication of what's happening. It takes everything into account because it's an actual measurement of what the ionosphere is doing. <clears throat> now, the K index, that's a three-hour index. It's a logarithmic scale goes from zero to nine. Uh, not zero is quiet, nine is very disturbed. And that's not good for the F2 region. The P, uh, if, if there's a P appended to the K or A index, that means it's a planetary index. That means it's from uh, many observatories. It's not just a single observatory. In other words, the planetary index is trying to give a picture of how active the Earth's magnetic field is all over the world. A index is a linear measurement. It's the average of the eight three-hour K indices. Goes from zero to 400. BZ, that's the uh, uh, strength and direction of the interplanetary magnetic field. In other words, the sun's magnetic field. 
goes from about plus 50 to minus 100 mm -hmm. generally. And uh, the Z component is perpendicular to the ecliptic. In other words, the plane in which the Earth goes around the sun. So that Z component is pretty much north-south, which kind of lines up with the Earth's magnetic field. And that tells us how well uh, the interplanetary magnetic field and its disturbances are coupling into the Earth's magnetic field. SW is the solar wind speed. It goes from 300 to, I think you get up to 2,000 kilometers per second. On average, it's about 400. So here, here's that table of uh, solar flux, sunspot number, and EUV uh, from the N0 NVH banner. And in the rightmost column, it tells us what the monthly median MUF is, the maximum usable frequency. For example, when we're at solar minimum, you'll see the EUV, that 304A on that banner, around 90 maybe a little bit higher. The sunspot number can be zero, maybe 10, 15. And we're still at solar minimum. <laughs> the 10.7 centimeter solar flux will be uh, 65 to 70 or so. And what that tells us is the monthly median MUF is going to be around 20 megahertz. Now, you've got to remember, median implies 50% probability. So uh, during a month, the uh, uh, MUF will be at least 20 megahertz on half the days of the month and less than half days. But unfortunately, we struggle to tell which days are good and which days are bad, <laughs> or predict which days are good and which days are bad. And the only way to determine is to you know, see what's going on on that day. And as, as things move up, uh, for example, if we uh, see the uh, long-term Extreme ultraviolet up around 400. The sun, smooth sunspot number up around 286. And the 10.7 uh, centimeter solar flux up around 245. Uh, that's going to tell us we're, we're near the maximum of a pretty big cycle, like cycle 19. And it also says the monthly median MUF is about 46 megahertz. Now, those MUFs are for a fall, winter month in the afternoon on a mid-latitude path. Now, remember that 46 megahertz is a median. In other words, there's a range of about 46. So uh, there's a lesser probability for a higher month, but it's there, and that's why we can see uh, six meters uh, be open. It's, it's probably, we'll never see six meter F2 propagation on a daily basis. Uh, that's kind of tough. We have to have lots of Lots of sunspots, <laughs> lots of EUV. The KA, DZ, and SW, uh, what we want is an un undisturbed F2 region. So we desire the K to be less than or equal to 3. That translates to an A index less than or equal to 15. We'd like BZ to be positive, which means the interplanetary magnetic field is not coupling very well into the Earth's magnetic field. So the Earth's magnetic field probably won't get screwed up. If it's a little negative, that's okay. And we'd like the solar wind to be not too much greater than 400 kilometers per second. Now we have to remember that even though the solar flux and the sunspot number and the uh, EUV parameters may indicate there's enough ionization, uh, the bands can be screwed up because the uh, uh, A and the K and the BZ and the solar wind are uh, not where we want it, <laughs> aren't per the first bullet. Now, you've got to remember that MUF US Boulder tells us everything. So really, we don't need to look at what SFI, sunspot number, EUV are doing. We don't need to look at what K, A, B, Z, and SW are doing because that measurement tells us everything. Of course, it's only generally for the Boulder area, but it's pretty much kind of 
good for the continental U.S. And of course, it's going to vary during the time of day. But it's still a very good indication. And it tells us what's going on. If it's very low, that may mean that we got lots of radiation coming in to ionize the atmosphere, but the disturbances are screwing up the F2 region and the MUF isn't very high. 